Right, so welcome to a new one on this channel and on this occasion is the Echo Boy Jr. from Sound Toys. Now this is not a review, it's a deep dive about this plugin. Now everything on this guide is in chapters, so if you look at the description or the timeline, you can jump to a section or skip the ones you don't want. So if you like what I do, like and subscribe please. And if you have the money and you want to buy me a coffee, you can. Everything is on the description. So this is the small version of the Echo Boy. Now, in my opinion, both are just fantastic. I like the Junior, this one the most, because it gives me different styles of delay with minimal tweaking. Now, with the Not Junior, the other one, you can do the same, but you have crazy amount of properties you can adjust. So you're going to spend more time, even if you don't want to, just, you know, fine tuning uh, the delay. So let's begin with the echo time, the mix and the feedback. So again, pretty simple controls. I feel like I don't need to explain it. So right here you have your echo time. If you play something, this is going to decide how fast and how slow the repetitions are going to go. Now, this control is tied to the controls you have at the bottom. So you can go in milliseconds, right? So pretty simple, all the way up to a long time, 2.4, you know, it's two seconds, two and a half seconds. Now, if I double click it, it's going to go by default to 100. Now you can go to note and use divisions, just like we did before. And right here, you can also change the different positions. Now you can use dotted and you can use triplets. So again, just pretty simple controls. Whenever you play something, you have a dry and wet, you can go all the way dry to have no effect. And you can just go towards the wet until you get pretty much just a delay. Right. So again, pretty simple controls. Now, then you have the feedback, which is going to be uh, the amount of repetitions, how long the repetitions is going to go. Right. So if I go up in feedback, it's just going to go crazy like that. Now, the feedback is tied to whatever style that you're using. So this knob will react very differently if you go up, depending on, you know, the style that you're using. Now, we're going to talk about this in a minute. All right, so let's talk about the modes. You have three different modes. Now, the normal is going to be the stereo delay. And I'm going to go to that one. Now, on this occasion, I'm using a synthesizer. It's a pretty simple synth uh, with, with a very basic sound. And the output is mono, right? So this is going to take that signal and it's going to add a little bit of hysterianess. You can see it right there on the vector scope. So if I do a chord, it's going to be a little bit more obvious. But it's, it's not that wide. It's still, you know, very mono. If I go back on the feedback, we can notice that mono a little bit more. But, you know, it still at a little bit uh, on the sides. But, uh, again, if you add a stereo, something that, you know, uh, does a stereo, let me just do a little bit of stereo. Notice that now, since the source is a stereo, the delay is going to be stereo. Now, you cannot go full mono on this one, but, you know, it's still pretty good. Now, then you have the white. Now, the white, it's pretty much like the normal. It's going to be a stereo delay, but it's going to offset the times a tiny little bit. So I'm going to go to my synthesizer and I'm going to make it mono again. And if I play something now, it's just much wider. And we can see it right there on the vector scope. So what this does again is going to offset the times. So for example, if I'm using, uh, I don't know, 100 on the left is going to be 100, but on the right side is going to be 105, 1010. I don't really know the values because, you know, they don't say, but what it does is going to do that. It's going to offset the right or either the left. And whenever you do that and you offset the left from the right, you get a much, uh, you know, more stereo. So that's, you know, the plan. Right. Now, let me just go maybe up. All right, so we can see it's just, you know, pretty white. Now, uh, what's the other one? The other one is going to be the ping pong. And as you could assume, this is just a ping pong delay. I'm going to add a little bit of feedback and I'm going to be playing one key. And it's just, you know, from left to right. If I do something like that, it's going to move to the left and the right. Pretty understandable. So I'm going to double click the mix, the uh, time, and I'm going to stay on time and white. And then I'm going to go to the feedback. So we need to talk about the glide. Now, uh, on usually on tape machines, adjusting the time will cause the delay to adjust. And uh, you get this pitch shift effect that, you know, sometimes is very desirable. So if I play a chord and I keep playing it, maybe I'm going to do a little bit more feedback. And I adjust this control. Maybe a little bit more mix. You get, you know, the pitch shift. It's going to adjust the delay and you get this detuning de or pitch shifting. Now this is because the glide it's on, if it's off, it will not do that. 
Now I'm gonna turn it off and now the delay will not give you this effect. So it's going to try, it's gonna try to offset the different times that you're trying to use. And when this happens, you just don't get that pitch shifting effect. You get that glitch, kind of a glitch type of effect because it's trying to adjust the times very fast. Right? So this is what this means. I mean, you could modulate this and use it as a sound effect, why not? Right, so let's talk about the different styles that we get. And this is like the main vibe of the plugin. Going through different styles of delay and you get different flavors. The first one is going to be the studio tape. Now this one is based on the Ampex 102, you know, at 15 IPS. Now this is a classic studio tape machine. You get a little bit of saturation and tape compression. So if you hear it, it's going to be, you know, uh, pretty much compressed because it's a tape machine. So if I uh, play something, it's just gonna sound like that. Now, when we listen to the other ones, we're gonna always go back and compare with this one. And you're gonna notice, really notice the difference. Right? Pretty under, pretty simple. It's not too aggressive. It's not too dark and it's not too bright. So the Ampex 102 is like the one of the most emulated tape machines in kind of a, I don't know, human history. So the Plex one is an emulation of the Echo Plex and is another tape classic, you know, machine. Now, this one is a little bit brighter. We still get saturation because it's uh, based on tape, but there's a change in tone and there's a little bit of, uh, you know, modulation, pitch modulation right, right there, modul modulation at the tail on the repetitions. Now, I'm going to be playing it and you can really notice the difference when we change to studio tape. This is a little bit brighter than the other one. If I go to studio tape and I do the same, pretty different, right? A lot thinner, this one it's more saturated and we get a modulation at the end. Very different and the decay, again, it's different. If I go to this one, very different. I'm going to go over there. I don't know. So you just get a different type of vibe because again, it's just emulating an Echoplex. Right, so let's move on to the next one is going to be the Space. Now this one is based on the Roland Space Echo, another Holy Grail type of delay. Now naturally this, uh, this delay, uh, this Echo uh, has uh, four heads. So it's a kind of a multi-tap type of delay. Now on this one, you don't get it. You just get one head, one tap. But uh, again, it has a very uh, specific sound, super smooth and warm. Now I'm gonna be playing it. Notice it's a lot darker and smoother than the Plex. If I uh, go to the other ones, super different, the studio tape. Very different. So I'll go again to the space echo. Notice how the repetitions when it decays. That we get a little bit of modulation right there at the bottom. Now this space, all the all the different types are uh, reactive to the feedback. If I go up on the feedback of the space echo, you're gonna really start noticing the difference. If I go to the other ones, to the plex, and do the same. Super right, right? In your face. And the studio tape, it's really different it's again. Let me first go back on feedback and then do it again. Right. So if you want a little bit of, uh, you know, go a little bit darker, get that modulation, the space echo is going to be for you. So this one, the cheap tape and the studio tape are the more normal ones, like the, you know, the more controlled, let's say, because the sound is really compressed. So if I play it, notice how it decays. Just a lot longer and it goes, you know, thinner. Let me go less on the feedback. I'm gonna go to the studio tape again. I'm gonna play it again. Very different, cheap tape. Right, so it's a little bit longer and the decay. And the other ones, you know, are really colored. Let's move on to the memory one. Now, uh, this one, it's based on the Electro Harmonix Memory Man. And this is like one of the holy gray uh, delay pedals. 
that you could get in life, let's say. Now, this one is a bucket brigade, so the repetitions will get darker as they go on. But one of the main features of the Memory Man, which is why it's so beloved, is because the repetitions get a cursed echo. So you get a uh, type of echo that it's being cursed. So if I play it, you're going to really notice it. Right? So it's closer to the space echo. But it's just a different vibe. And if we go up on the feedback, we're going to notice it even more. Right. Let me go back and go back up. And I'm going to just take you to the space and just, you know, trying to hear the difference. A little bit different, right? I'm going to go to memory, play it again. Right. And studio tape. Very different. So maybe it's too aggressive. I'm going to stay right there, maybe. Uh, it's still on 50%. Now I'm going to stay on the memory. And one of the cool things that uh, from a bucket brigade type, uh, type of delay is that even if you are being uh, really aggressive, since the sound is dark and it's going to, you know, go decay in time, it has a darker decay, uh, you can be playing something and it will always stay in the background. Right? If I do the same thing, but I go to the plexi, I'm gonna go right there. And if I do, again do the same, the repetitions are in your face. So you will need to go down in the mix and just make a better blend, but it's just right in your face. So maybe if you're doing some leads or something that needs to shine, you know, more on the dry than the wet and the repetitions, uh, maybe using a memory man, a backup brigade type of delay, it's just gonna, it's just gonna work. So the ambient, it's not emulating anything, but the delays uh, will go through a distortion and has a more dense sound and also has diffusion. So it, it's going to sound more, more like an open uh, type of delay going through a reverb. If I play it, yeah, it's like we put a delay or a, a reverb on the feedback loop of the delay. So, you know, it's just long and uh, lush, so you can get that type of uh, delay with this uh, with this plugin. Now, the next one is going to be the transmitter. So, like this says, is a radio type of sound, is distorted, is heavy on the mids, and it's greedy. And this one is my favorite. It has a lot of character, and it's not for everything, of course, but it sounds great on some instruments. You know, it depends on the style, of course. If I play it, that is it's just really in your face. It's thin, more in the mids than thin. That depends on the sound. I'm, I'm using a very dull sound, so it doesn't sound that good. But if I use uh, maybe a, a better synth or, you know, a guitar or something like that. It's going to give you something else. So this is one of my favorite types. So then at the bottom, you have the low cut and the high cut. And I believe that I don't need, don't even need to explain this, but you know, I'm going to show you. If you go, uh, I'm going to go to studio tape because it's just, you know, the normal one. So the low cut is going to cut the low frequencies and the high cut is going to cut high frequencies. So if you have something that needs to be cut like the bottom, for example, the lower frequencies, you're going to go to the low cut and you're going to cut as much as you need. Now, I'm going to go all the way up on the mix so you can hear the difference. And if I go all the way down, we get a lot more lows now, right? Right. So the other thing is going to be just the same for the highs. If I go up, it's really dark. So the high cut and the low cut are really useful to shape whatever it is that you're doing. Maybe you don't need to, but for example, if I go to the plexi, the plexi, you love it, but it's just right in your face, right? Just right in your face. So maybe it's just, oh, sorry for that, just a little bit too aggressive. So what I want to do, maybe I want to cut a little bit of the highs because it's just uh, right there in the mix and I can cut a little bit of the lows and just make a, just make a better blend. Right, so the input and the output. So this plugin is designed to be used as a hardware unit, right? It's, the, it's that vibe. 
It's just trying to emulate that. So with the with the hardware unit, what you can do, you can boost the input. And what you're doing, you're just hitting the, the pre uh, a lot harder. So you're just driving it. So it depends on the style that you're using right here. Just going to drive it more or less. But what you will do, you will be getting cleaner if you're doing nothing, if you're doing less input. Or if you do more input, you're going to get dirty delays. Now, the lights right here at the bottom show you how much input is that you're doing. In this case, it's just very mild, not doing a lot of input, right? And right here, you can see it on the on the green light. I'm going to go down on the output. I'm going to go more on the input. And it, it's going to grow. Now, when we are reaching the yellow, the yellow means that you're not clipping, but you are almost there. Now, red means that you're clipping. I'm going to go all the way up. And I'm going to go down on the output. But this is already very different. So if I play something, I'm gonna go something maybe to uh, I'm gonna go to a space because I like it. I'm gonna go up on the feedback. I'm gonna uh, play it. It's gonna sound like that. And what happens if I go down on the input and I do pretty much the same, just a little bit cleaner. Now the saturation will not go crazy. Now, if I go up on the saturation, it's going to start sounding a little bit more uh, smooth and compressed. So if I, uh, you know, play something without, it's going to sound like that. If I go up on the saturation, maybe I'm going to go to fall. That is it. Now, the plex, which is, you know, pretty in your face, it sounds a little bit darker and compressed and controlled. If I go down, much more dynamic. If I do it again, Less dynamic. I'm gonna go down, go up, so we can cure it again. Right, so it's a little bit different. Now I'm doing wet 100%. So if I go over there, we can just hear. We can really hear it, right? If I go down to the saturation. I go up. Way different. A lot less compressed. So you can use all of these tools to your advantage because maybe you want the plexi sound, but maybe going down to saturation and not using this is, uh, you know, way too in your face. So doing the high cut, going up on the saturation and maybe driving the input and going down on the output, doing something like this, it's just, it's going to give you a different tone. Okay, so that's it. So hopefully you liked all of this and you learned something new. And uh, I guess uh, I guess I'm going to be covering the other one, the Echo Boy, not Junior. And it's going to be a little bit long because that that thing can do a million different things. I will not go through all the different types because they you have a lot. But you know, just covering all the different options and how you can tweak it uh, to your favor. So please like and subscribe if you liked all this. And uh, if you have the money and you want to buy me a coffee just to say thanks, you can go to the links in the description. You have the YouTube thanks, you have the PayPal and uh, and Patreon. So you can go to Patreon, maybe be a one month patron and maybe buy me a coffee that way. So see you on the next one.